loving as Christ loved. To grow in our love for one another, we must follow Christ's example. Here's Gene. There are a number of themes that John develops in this little letter. For example, here are some important themes that are so clear. God the Father and God the Son are one. He deals with that. He comes back to that frequently. God is light. There is no darkness in Him. In fact, there are some Bible students who believe that that is the major theme, really, of this little epistle. A third theme, Jesus Christ in Himself is eternal life. So those are themes, no question, multiple themes that John develops. But there is no theme more prevalent and more prominent than uh, what we call loving one another. And that's so um, evident when you just simply go back and review some of the verses we've already looked at. For example, 1 John 2.10, the one who loves his brother or sister remains in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. There you see a blending of the two themes, walking in the light and loving one another. 1 John 3.11, For this is the message you've heard from the beginning. We should love one another. So there again, very prominent in the text. 1 John 3.23, Now this is His command that we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He commanded us. 1 John 4.7, and here, of course, we're we're jumping ahead. Uh, because he develops this theme on into the future from where we are in the text right now. 1 John 4, 7, Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, 11, Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. 1 John 4, 12, No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us, and His love is made complete in us. So there's no question that loving one another is a very uh, prominent theme in uh, John's little epistle that he's writing. And there's another interesting observation. If you look at the word love, just take the word love, uh, John uses that word over 40 times uh, in this little epistle. So love is a very, very important theme. But here is one of the most important references to love. I call it the most important statement uh, that we really see in this whole letter as it applies to us. And this is what John wrote. This is how we have come to know love. He, Jesus, laid down His life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. I believe that as John was penning this letter, as he was writing about love, I can see tears flowing down his cheeks when he wrote this verse. Let me read it again. This is how we've come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Why would John be touched? Think of the memories. Think of the time that he and his brother James went to Jesus Christ and said, we want to sit on the right and the left when we come into your kingdom, when you're ruling in Israel. That reminds me of what actually happened in that scene as we go to Mark chapter 10. When they came and asked to sit on the right and the left, Jesus said to them, You don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup I drink or to be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? And in arrogance, they both said, We are able. Now, in essence, they don't understand totally the cup because when Jesus was in the garden praying, as it were, drops of blood in perspiration. He said, Lord, 
Father, if it's possible, let this cup be removed from me. But he said, nevertheless, what you want, Father, not what I want. And of course, James and John have no idea when they so arrogantly said, yeah, we, we, can, we can drink that cup. We can do that. Can you imagine what John was feeling when he penned that, these words that he just penned about love and what it really means? I think he also remembered uh, the upper room, the Last Supper, when there was a dispute. We read, Then a dispute also arose among them about who should be considered the greatest. Well, it doesn't take much imagination to know that James and John were right in the middle of that argument, creating that argument at the Last Supper where Jesus is going to say, This cup represents my blood, as you remember me. This bread represents my body, which will be broken for you. John had to remember that event. But I also think he remembered what Jesus said after he had washed their feet. And he gave them this new command. I give you a new command. Love one another just as I've loved you. You are also to love one another. And all of these men thought he was talking about washing feet because he had just washed their feet. Now, in essence, he was saying, serve one another, but he was pointing to something else when he said, love one another just as I have loved you. He was projecting to the future when he would die for them and for the sins of the whole world. And when he wrote these words, 1 John 3.16, he really understood, and I think he understood this rather quickly after Jesus died and rose again, but notice what he wrote in 1 John 3.16, now 60 years later, approximately. This is how we have come to know love. Jesus washed our feet, and we ought to wash one another's feet. Is that what he said? No, that's what they thought he meant. But here's what Jesus really meant. This is how we've come to know love. He laid down his life for us we should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And when John really understood that, you can imagine how he felt when he and James so arrogantly said, yeah, we can drink that cup. But here's why I think maybe he had tears streaming down his cheeks. His brother James drank the cup. He didn't realize what he was going to what was going to happen to him. But here we have James martyrdom in Acts chapter 12. About that time King Herod violently attacked some who belonged to the church and he executed James John's brother with the sword. And as John penned these words, this is how we know what love really is. Jesus laid down his life for us and we should lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. His brother James actually paid that price because his life was transformed and he really understood what is love. And I think John must have said, why James? Why am I in my 90s and I'm still alive? And he was taken so early. So this, I think, was just a very personal kind of communication uh, in this uh, little epistle as he's writing and defining love. Jesus, of course, there in that upper room was pointing to the cross. And if he had said to them after he washed their feet, this is how you know whether you love each other if you're willing to die for each other. Well, they weren't willing to walk across the street at that point for each other. So Jesus dealt with what they could understand, and that is foot washing. They could understand that. But his real meaning is what John wrote here, that real love, ultimate love, is loving each other so much that we're willing to literally give our lives for one another. That indeed is the ultimate in love, something that is hard to identify with. I know it certainly is for me. I could hope that I could have that kind of love if I were ever put in that kind of situation. But. Let's just think of the here and now 
the simple practical things that this means. And there's the reflection and response question. How did John make his reference to loving as Christ's love very practical in 1 John 3.17? After saying, here's how we know what love is, being willing to die for one another, he simply said this. Let's be realistic. If anyone has this world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need, but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. And of course, John was not saying that our speech shouldn't reflect God's love. But the real essence of love is what we do, our action, our real commitment to the truth. And so here's the principle that grows out of this passage that I think applies to all of us. To grow in our love for one another, we must follow Christ's example.